Some commentary and summary then on the using on using Quake W in Geo Studio 2007. Quake W does have a nonlinear model in it. It's a hyperbolic stress strain type of relationship and uh, this is available in Quake W but it has its limitations and I'll just make a few comments. But if we were to follow a stress path during the shaking you of course can see here that there starts out linear but then exceeds the strength and becomes nonlinear and eventually there it the stress paths follow these shapes due to the hyperbolic nature of the stress strain relationship. Associated with the nonlinear model is the Martin Martin Finn seed pore pressure model. This pore pressure model is relates the compressibility of the material to the possible generation of excess pore pressures. And the idea is that under drained, under drained conditions, soil will rebound when unloaded. And so the material is described in terms of a recoverable modulus. The thinking then is that under undrained conditions, undrained conditions, the volume change cannot occur because water being incompressible, but the potential for the volume change manifests itself as an equivalent pore pressure change. And so the pore pressure increase is related to the potential volumetric strain. It is possible to measure the recoverable modulus from unloading in an odometer test. I won't go in into any details here on how this is done. I leave it up to you to uh, educate yourself on this if this is of interest to you. Conceptually, it is a reasonable model. The difficulty is it is not used in field practice and so we have no experience with this model. We have little data or reference to this model in the research literature and to our knowledge Quake W is the only dynamic program that has implemented this model. We at least are not aware of any other implementation. As a result, to repeat, we have had almost no experience with this model and therefore we need to use it. If you are going to use it, you have to use it with considerable caution. So first and foremost then, summarizing Quake W, is that Quake W cannot be used to compute permanent deformations whether we do it with equivalent linear or with the nonlinear model, Quake W alone has not been intended to compute permanent deformations. In the GeoStudio environment, permanent deformations can only be computed by using Quake results in slope or sigma. And consequently, little can be achieved with regard to permanent deformations by using Quake W in isolation. The Quake W component of the analysis is useful information in a, for dynamic response. It gives a visual image of the potential motion, but conceptually not quantitative. Very important to remember this. So our recommendation at this stage is that you use the equivalent linear method if you are interested in excess pore pressures, liquefactions, and post-earthquake deformations.
The most important issue that you have to address is you have to be able to answer the question, do you have a material with a collapsible grain structure? Loose fine sand, for example. This is, of course, a very difficult question to answer, but it is vital to doing a liquefaction assessment. And so it has to be established that the material is of a nature such that it has a collapsible grain structure, that is, that it is perhaps a loose fine sand. If you decide that indeed you have foundation material or embankment material that has this characteristic, then we should use the collapse surface approach. Lots of lab and field data available to confirm that the idea of a collapsible grain structure is a real phenomena, and the collapse surface concept provides a framework for interpreting the behavior of materials and evaluating the liquefaction susceptibility. And above all else, the beauty of it is that the collapse surface automatically adjusts for initial confining stress, initial shear stress, and it's a framework for interpreting static liquefaction as well as dynamic liquefaction. So our recommendation is when you do a liquefaction assessment that you start with sigma. You must have complete confidence in the initial static stresses how to do the static stresses and how do the static stresses relate to the collapse surface. Are they close or far away? And consequently, quake becomes only one component in the liquefaction assessment. Several times I have mentioned the white paper in the folder called Papers of Interest. I once again refer you to that paper and you should read it if you are going to do a liquefaction assessment. But above all else, the most important issue is the possibility of a sudden strength loss. This is at the heart of the issue. There are other things like elevation of pore pressure and some decrease in shear strength resulting from that. Elevations in pore pressures and decrease in confining stress, effective confining stress also could alter the stiffness of the soil. And all of that is true, but at the heart and the most significant factor is the sudden strength loss. This is what causes structures to suddenly collapse and generally leads to liquefaction. When it comes to the earthquake record, please remember to use only the strong motion component, particularly in an equivalent linear analysis, which means that you will have to do some pre-processing of the earthquake record such that you are only dealing with the strong motion part of the record. Quake W can accommodate structural elements. Uh, the primary function of the structure elements is that they can alter the stiffness of the earth structure and therefore alter the dynamic response of the earth structure. And so this is the primary intent of structural elements in Quake W is to include the stiffness of the structural elements. I should note that Quake W is not Quake W is not the right tool if the primary interest or objective objective is structural design. So once again in most cases we need to use Quake W in conjunction with slope, sigma and C. Quick W in isolation is of limited value. And so here are the references that I have been referring to throughout these presentations. Uh, they are obviously listed in the proceedings and available to you and uh, you can check out these references that I have mentioned throughout the discussion on Quick W. So that then brings us to the end of the workshop presentation on Quake W, how to use Quake W, what can be done, and hopefully using the illustrative example has 
demonstrated what can be done with Quake W and we will leave the workshop presentation at this point on Quake W.